When you're trying to figure it out, God has already worked it out. Yes. He's an all time God. Bless you. Amen. Amen. God be the glory for all that he's done and all that he continues to do. And we go live. Praise the Lord. Those that are worshiping us via Facebook Live, good morning and welcome to worship. We give God praise to you. Those who are worshiping via Zoom, God bless you. And we're thankful that you are worshiping with us today. Amen. Amen. We give God all the glory. We give God all the praise. Amen. We pray that it wouldn't rain on us, but the Lord let the wind blow on us. And it's all right. It's all right this morning. Praise God. Amen. We want to get started with our announcements this morning. Let us go to our announcements for the week. Be mindful of the weekly announcements, and we want to share that um, uh, we want to celebrate the March birthdays, and uh, you have the updated March birthday list in your worship pack, so we give God praise. Uh, we're mindful that it is a blessing to see another birthday. Every time the Lord bless us with another year, we ought to celebrate. Good morning, Thanks Reverend so Tyson. God bless you. Good to see you. Praise the Lord. We give God glory. We give him honor. We give him uh, uh, praise this morning for another day. Uh, I want to thank all of those who uh, shared with our church conference and our quality church conference last uh, week. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you for completing your reports. Thank you for doing all that was needed uh, for the meetings that we had. I also want to thank uh, those of you who uh, worship with us uh, midweek for Ash Wednesday service. If you attended Ash Wednesday service, let me hear from you this morning. Amen, amen. We had a wonderful, wonderful time in the Lord, and I still feast on the word from Reverend McDuffie. And the, the, uh, stop talking and just listen, amen. And we give God praise for that. Anybody excited about church anniversary? Did you see your worship pack? That we're gonna have a momentous month of March where we celebrate our 100th church anniversary. Y'all stuck with me today, but on next Sunday, praise the Lord. A daughter of the church, Reverend Fanny Sanders Johnson will preach the word. And on the third Sunday, a son of Murchison Samuel, Reverend Samuel Hudson III will preach the word. And then on the fourth Sunday, a former a pastor of the church and somebody you might know, Bishop Sylvester Williams Sr. will preach the word for our church anniversary on March the 28th. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the blessings of God and excited to celebrate a century, a centennial celebration of God's faithfulness to God's church. And our, 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 our theme for the preachers is for a church anniversary is built to last. Do you know that God's church is built to last? It's built to last and we stand on that very strong foundation of the Lord as we celebrate, amen. Amen, we give God glory. It's been a, a very busy time, a busy season, and it continues, and we just give God praise. I believe all the other announcements are listed in your worship guide. You see the Lenten season, our prayer list, and our birthday list, and we just uh, want you to be informed and have all the information you need in order to minister to others and, and to share where you need to share. Amen. Praise the Lord. We give God glory. Amen. Amen. Let us transition to worship. Let us get centered on worshiping the Lord. Bring our mind in, our thoughts in, our hearts in, so we can allow the spirit in. Amen. Amen. We give God glory. We give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have come to this house and we gather in the name of the Lord to worship. We have come to forget about ourselves and concentrate on Him and worship. 
we have come to lift up holy hands and magnify the name of the Lord and worship. We have come to let God know that we appreciate him keeping us and waking us up this morning with new mercies and giving us another opportunity to worship. We have come to say, Lord, we love you and we adore you. We thank you for your blessings and we thank you for this great opportunity to worship you, to give you honor. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father, full of mercy and full of grace, you are welcome in this place. Have your way, O oh God, in whatever you want to do with us this morning. You woke us up so that we will see a brand new day and another opportunity to worship, O oh God. And you know what we need in this moment, in this time, in this season. Do what you want to do with us, O oh God. And any way you want to bless us as we worship you, we will be satisfied. Have your way. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. We praise the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. We give God glory for all that He's done and all that He continues to do. God be praised. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is so worthy of praise. Anybody believe that this morning? That God is worthy of praise, that we owe Him praise. And anybody know that the blood still works, that it's because of the blood of Jesus that we are here today? It is because of the blood of Jesus that we are able to worship the true and the living God. It is because of the blood of Jesus that we have this power and the ability to overcome any and everything. The blood still works. It's a, it's God, the blood still works. The blood still has healing power. The blood still has saving power. The blood still has delivery power. It shall never it was never lose its power. Why? The blood still works. If you believe it, press your hand in the blood. The blood still works. Yes, it does. I'm so thankful. Never. The blood still works, Reverend Tyson. The blood still works. 
is the Apostles' Creed. If we have any visitors with us, it is found in your worship guide. And so you can share with us if you believe. Amen. And who do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen, amen, praise God. Yes, the blood still works. Down 24 generations, over 2000 years ago, the blood still works. We thank God for his faithfulness, his continued and consistent faithfulness to, to us, to his church and to his people. God has not forgotten us and God has never left us and God continues to provide for us. And certainly I wanna thank you for your faithfulness that you remember to be faithful to a faithful God. Not faithful to me, not, not, not faithful to a ministry, but faithful to God. The officers will assist you if you need that at this time. Let us ask God to bless our offerings back to him. Let's ask God to Give us wisdom and discernment that all that we do will be pleasing to him. Let's ask God to bless us to be a blessing so that brothers and sisters who have needs can be able to be ministered to. Let us ask God to give us an overflow blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. Anybody know that you can't be God given? No matter, we, we don't have enough. And, and the secret to that is everything we give God is already God's anyway. So how can we possibly be God given when we're given to God when he gave 
gave to us. We're just giving it back to the one who gave it to us. So there's no way in the world we can be to give it, but let us live our lives trying, striving to give and give and give and give so that God would be pleased with our giving. Anybody trying to be God giving? Anybody trying to be sacrificial and generous and just want to be a blessed to God? I don't hear you. Anybody trying to bless God with your giving? Amen. Amen. Y'all had me worried for a moment. I was like, is the mic on? Do I need to do a mic check? Did anybody hear what I said? Anybody trying to be God giving? Anybody trying to love God by, by just giving from what God is giving out of the abundance? And bountiful blessings that God has given you, you give back to God to just bless somebody. Bless to be a blessing. Oh, we can't be God giving. Be God. No matter. No matter how. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you. We praise you. We honor you. And we are so grateful. Grateful for your generosity. Grateful that you bless us and we don't deserve it. Lord, we come as your humble servants just desire to be obedient to you and desire that you would be pleased with our worship and our giving. Bless us, Lord, to be selfless and realize that you are our source. And whenever we give, you will continue to bless us to give more and more and more. Bless us now, O oh Lord, and help us to be the stewards you have called us to be. So that we would give the upbuilding of your kingdom. So that others would know your love and know your provision. Bless all that we receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. No matter. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We allow the music ministry to bless us at this time. And just so you'll know, we'll be in the Gospel of Luke. So you can go there and be prepared for Luke chapter 4. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the blood. Amen. If you would learn how to bleed the Amen. blood over your family. We just you would have to the blood over your on children. You would see today. a transformation Amen. like never before. Somebody Amen. just say the blood. Hey. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood. Uh, come on, this is the stuff we used to do for communion. Yeah, these are the songs that carried us. It was our sad wine. Come on, sing it like it's Sunday morning. Oh, the blood. Yes, Lord. Oh, the blood. I'm seeing Thank you for the blood, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. It's with it was Come on, say it again. Oh, the blood. The blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, the blood. The blood. In the world, Jesus is going away. Yeah. Don't worry, he's coming back again. Jesus is going away. He's coming back again. Jesus is going away. Don't worry, he's coming back. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, say it again. Jesus is going away. Yeah. He's coming back again. I can't wait to see him. He's coming back again. He's gone away. But he's coming back again. Yeah. 
you uh, to read some of chapter three, three, and four, but we're going to lift up a couple of these verses and Luke uh, chapter four. I'm just going to lift up verse one and two. Uh, at this time, we'll make reference to the other verses in the message. 
Amen. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version this morning. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this preaching moment. We're grateful for your word. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Listen, the mighty name of your dear son, Jesus, that I pray. Amen. In chapter two of the Gospel of Luke, we learn of a familiar story of when Jesus went to uh, Jerusalem with his parents for the feast of the Passover. And in that story, he was left behind. You all remember the story of Jesus when he was about 12 years old and he was left in uh, Jerusalem. And in this day and age, they probably would be called child neglect. So they journeyed and then it was a day or so in and they realized that Jesus wasn't with them and they went back for him and he was in Jerusalem amazing the scholars. That was in chapter two and then we read in chapter three of the gospel of Luke that uh, when all the people were baptized it came to pass that Jesus was also baptized and while he prayed, the heaven was open and the Holy Spirit descended in a bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven and said, You are my beloved son, and you I am well pleased. And then we move to chapter four. And in chapter four, we find that Jesus said more than no. Sometimes we have to say more than no. Anybody remember in the 80s, the early 90s, there was a slogan uh, that came out and a, a, a concept of just say no. It was part of war on drugs and it was aiming to discourage children from engaging in illegal uh, recreational drug use by offering various ways to say no. The slogan was created and championed by the first uh, lady Nancy Reagan under her first her cousin's presidency. Just say no, just say no. And I remember being in the school system and we had the signs and we had drug awareness week and all of that. Just say no. Sometimes you have to say more than no. Sometimes you have to say more than no. In chapter four, we find that, that uh, Jesus hasn't been mentioned since his baptism. And here we find Jesus filled with the Holy Spirit, led by the Spirit, and tempted by the devil. But Jesus stood his ground and resisted the devil, and he said more than no to the devil. He was filled with the Holy Spirit in a communal way. In public, he was baptized in the Jordan River, and many witnessed this. And, and, and Jesus had, had promised uh, 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 in his word that the permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit, for all of us, us who come to know the Lord, we have the, the, the permanency of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, but it is a difference to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we yield to the Holy Spirit and, and we allow the Spirit to fully possess us and, and fill us up. And, and to be filled with the Spirit implies freedom 
of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that Jesus was led in the wilderness by the Spirit. Uh, that's really something to think about being filled and full of the Spirit, but yet the Spirit leading him into the wilderness. So we would say, why would why would the Spirit lead him in harm's way? Why would the Spirit lead him in the wilderness knowing what he was going to face? But the Spirit never leads us wrong. When we're full of the Spirit and led by the Spirit, the Spirit tells us what to say, where to go, and what to do. When one is full of the Spirit, then we allow the Spirit to lead and guide us. The Bible tells us that Jesus was led by the Spirit and, and he was in the wilderness for 40 days. He was tempted by the devil. Now, sometimes we have a hard time with just the devil just nudging us and tempting us to do something really simple. But for 40 days, 40 days, he was tempted by the devil. And not only that, he wasn't in his full capacity. 40 days he was tempted, but know that he hadn't eaten for 40 days. I don't know about you, when, 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 when I haven't eaten in a long time, I don't function as well as I do when I'm fully nourished. When, when I haven't eaten in a long time, I don't think as clearly as I do when I, when I eat. When I haven't eaten uh, in a long time, I'm just not uh, up to speed and, 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 and fully myself. But Jesus fasted for 40 days. And at the end of the day, of, of the 40 days, it goes without saying that he was hungry. It goes without saying that he was famished. Hunger equates to, to weakness. He was desiring to nourish his body. He was longing to eat some food to build up his strength. He hasn't eaten in over a month and he is in a weakened state, a vulnerable state, a critical state. He is beginning to starve to death. He, his ability to think and his behavior could have very well been altered because after all, he's had no nourishment in 40 days. When we are hungry for something, whether it be food or something else, and when we're in a desperate place, this is the ideal place and the ideal time for the devil to show up and tempt us. When, when we are at a place where we're in desperate mode, when we really want something, that's the, that's the prime time for the devil to show up. That's the prime time for the devil to, to, uh, to give us a little suggestion because he knows that we're at a place where we want something so bad and feel like we need it so bad. Although who Jesus would, was had been established, the devil knew who, who he was, but the devil didn't really know who he was fooling with. And that ought to be the, the same story for all of us, that he, he knows who we are, but he really don't know who we fooling with. He knows who we are. He knows who we belong to, but he doesn't really understand who we belong to. Satan didn't know what he was dealing with. And now, though Jesus was vulnerable in his body, he was confident in his faith and in his love for God. See, we can be weak in the body, but strong in our faith. We can be weak in our body, and, and, but strong in our belief that God is going to see us through. We can be weak in our body, but believe God to deliver us. We can be weak in our body, but know that the blood still works. We can be weak in our body, but yet fully depend on a strong God. When the devil tempted Jesus, he didn't know that he was under the influence. He didn't know that he was under the influence of the Holy Spirit. He didn't know that he was filled with the Spirit of God. And Jesus didn't fall for it. We would tell the children, just say no. When somebody offers you drugs, just say no. But you got to give them a more than a no. You got to be able to say more than no. You got to have more than a no down in your spirit. You got to be able to deal with the enemy because the devil's not going to stop just because you say no. But Jesus said more then no. In his temptation, Jesus demonstrated not only his ability to resist the devil, but also his allegiance to God. What Adam could not do, Jesus did. Where Israel fell in the wilderness, Jesus did not fail in the wilderness. He succeeded. Now we got to know something about Jesus' background. 
Judaism centered on the command to love the Lord your God with all your heart and your might. These words introduced the Shema, Israel's confession of faith. According to tradition, these words, love the Lord your God with all your strength and all your might. These words were recited twice every day in the morning and in the evening. And two of the verses of scripture quoted by Jesus following after uh, uh, the, the, the Shema is what he said to the devil. Jesus' response to the devil's temptation demonstrated the fulfillment of the Shema. Jesus loved the Lord with all of his heart. Temptation is a universal human experience. All of us are going and have been and will be tempted. All of us, the devil has something for all of us. The devil knows when we're at a weakened state. The devil knows when we are fragile. The devil knows when we are vulnerable. The devil knows when we are wanting some things that, that we ought not want. The devil has that information on all of us. All of us will be tempted. It is not something that was only true to Jesus. And Jesus uh, had to show uh, how he responded to temptation for us to see his humanity. Because if Jesus had never been tempted, we would not be able to relate to him as a human because he was fully human and fully divine. But Jesus did not allow his divinity to respond to the devil, but he responded to him in his humanity. And he said more than no. The devil was tempting Jesus so he would reveal his identity. Jesus knew who he was and had nothing to prove to the devil. We got to realize who we are and that we have nothing to prove to the devil. We have to be able to say more than no and go on about our business. We are not engaged in conversation and dialogue with the devil. You can't go back and forth with the enemy and Jesus didn't do that. You can't make a deal with the devil. Anything the devil offers will jeopardize your relationship with the Lord. You can best believe that if the devil offers you something, it's not something that's good for you. If the devil offers you something, it's going to lead to your destruction. If the devil offers you something, I don't care how good it looks with the natural eye, you can believe that it will lead to your destruction. For he comes to kill steal and destroy that is his agenda he is the father of lies uh, you can't believe a word that he says he is not a promise keeper he is a promise stealer he is a schemer and a deceiver and if the devil is trying to engage in a conversation with you and tempt you to do something you better think about the shema you better think about loving the lord your god with all of your heart and your mind and your soul and realize that whatever the devil offers is going to be contradictory to the word of God. Scripture tells us no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. It's a deal or no deal situation. You can't play with the devil. You, 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 Jesus said, no deal. You cannot straddle the fence. Scripture says, be either hot or cold. Don't be lukewarm. Don't try to play both ends. Don't try to uh, be uh, Satan's friend and then uh, uh, want Jesus to, to be your savior. No, you got to make up in your mind and you got to be able to say more than no to the devil. For us, it's not a question of if we'll be tempted. It's the when. Jesus was filled with the spirit and the spirit led him into the wilderness. The devil tempted him and Jesus said, no deal. In so many words, Jesus said, there is nothing you can offer me that, will, that, will, that I will accept to reject my God. That there is nothing I am willing to do or you to reject my God. We want to blame every hardship we go through on the devil, but it is clear in this text that the spirit led Jesus in the wilderness. It follows then that the spirit often leads us into trials and tribulations and uncertainties and wilderness experiences. Everybody gets the devil say he just gets a bad rap. We want to blame everything on the devil, but sometimes the spirit is leading us in places so we can really build up our faith. The spirit is leading us in places so that we will be able to, to tell the devil more than no. The, 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 the spirit is leading us into places where we can demonstrate how much we love God. 
he'll lead us just as he led Jesus into the wilderness. And the good news is this, the good news is 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, that God said that whatever he allows us to be tempted, it, it, we will have the strength to overcome it. God will never allow us to be tempted beyond our ability to resist. It is never true to say the devil made me do it. No, that, that's, that's not true. The devil can't make you do a thing. Uh, no, the devil tempts you and then you took the bait. That's what you should say, that I took the devil's bait. But the devil did not make you do and cannot make us do anything. When we are tempted, we must stay focused on who we are and who is leading us. Satan was basically saying, since you are the Messiah, and saying to us, since you're a Christian, since you claim to love the Lord, why don't you do such and such? And since you're a Christian, why are you going through this? And anybody ever heard that voice in, in your head when you're trying to live for God and stuff just keeps happening and the devil say, oh, since you're so saved, why, why this happening? You love the Lord so much. You do all that for the church and you're going through this. That's the devil telling you. If you're really a child of God, you need to do this or you need to do that, trying to make you doubt who you are. Please know. That when we are tempted, we're not tempted by things that don't appeal to us. You hear me? When we are tempted, we're not tempted by things that don't entice us. When we are tempted, we are not tempted by things that don't catch our eye. When we are tempted, we are not tempted by things that don't appeal to us. We are not tempted by things that we don't think we need in our lives. We are not tempted by things that, that won't bring pleasure. We're not tempted by things that, 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 that uh, uh, won't satisfy physical needs and desires. Know that we are tempted by the things that we want. We are tempted by the things that we think about. We are tempted by the things that, that we see other folks having and enjoying. We're tempted by fame. We're tempted by uh, 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 authority and, and power and, and prestige and, 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 and uh, keeping up with the Joneses and, and all of that. Those are the things that tempt us. When we see some things that we want, the devil will put them before us and say, oh, you can have this. Uh, you, you know, you can have this. All you got to do is you can you can have this. We are tempted by the things that will destroy us. We are tempted by the things that we are weak for. We are tempted when we are, are weak in our prayer life and weak in our uh, and fasting and weak in our study of the word of God. We are tempted when we're at low points. When Jesus has fasted for 40 days, that's when the devil showed up. The devil showed up when, when he was at a point where, where he was famished, where he was weak, where he was hungry, when he was disoriented. The, the, the devil showed up then and then tried to appeal to him and tried to get him to say yes to the devil. But, the, but Jesus said no, and he said more than no. Temptation is a universal experience that, that must be confronted with power. It must be confronted. We say that there's still power in the blood. It must be confronted with the word of God. You can't just say no to the devil. The devil's not going to leave you alone just because you say no. So we told the children to just say no to drugs, but we came to realize that we had to give them more information than just saying no, because there were other alternatives that the devil had. If, the, if they said no to drugs, the devil was going to give them some sex. If they said no to this, the devil was going to give them that. We had to tell them more than just say no. We had to give them alternatives. And Jesus gives us an alternative to just say no to the devil. He gave the devil the word of God. He gave, he stood sure-footed on the word of God, even in his weakened state. He was able to tell the devil what thus says the Lord. He was able to tell the, the devil, it is written in the word of God. Jesus stood on the word and when he was tempted to turn stone into bread as hungry as he was jesus said man shall not live 
by bread alone. When tempted to gain power, if he would just worship the devil, Jesus said, no, oh, I will worship the Lord my God and serve him only. When he was tempted, uh, the devil said, well, that ain't working. Let me quote some scripture. So the devil began to quote some scripture and say, you know, it's written somewhere that the angels have charge over your life and the angels will protect you. And he said, he took him to the highest point uh, of the temple and said, you just jump. Hallelujah. Uh, the angels will catch you, the, and you ain't nothing gonna happen. And Jesus told him no, and Jesus said, I will not put the Lord, my God, to the test. We have to realize that we got to say more than no to the devil. You got to say the word, but you can't say the word if you don't know the word. So you got to study to show yourself approved that whatever the devil comes up with, you will be able to say more than no to the devil. You will be able to let him know what thus says the Lord. He said, I will not put the Lord, my God, to the test. The devil was not able to successfully tempt Jesus, so he went about his business with every intention of showing back up in Jesus' life when he thinks he will be successful. So even when you tell him no and you give him the word, he will come back. He's relentless. He's going to come back at an opportune time. He's going to come back when he thinks you you're at a low point. He's going to Come back when you and that have that pity party and you having that whoa it's me moment. He's gonna show up in that moment and try to tempt you to go in another direction. Jesus had quite an experience with the devil, but he stayed devoted to God and was able to resist him. Know that God gives us what we need to resist the wiles of the enemy. He gives us what we need to be able to say no to the enemy. He gives us what we need to be able to stand on his word and know that his word will not return unto him void. He gives us what we need. And so as we think about what Jesus endured those 40 days and this 40 day journey that we are on as Christians during the Lenten season. We are on this journey and, 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 and many times we find ourselves in a wilderness experience doing Lent and we are trying to get to the cross. We're trying to get closer to the Lord and on this journey let us be determined to stay focused and, and stay centered on how the spirit is leading us. Uh, before we can do that we have to be filled with the spirit of the Lord, filled with the Holy Spirit. And let us empty ourselves of the things that make us weak, empty ourselves of the things that will cause the enemy to say, oh, this is a good time. This is a good time to attack. This is a good time for us uh, to, 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 to tempt him or to tempt her. This is a good time for us to show up in this Christian's life. Let us be filled with the spirit and empty ourselves. Everybody's talking about what they've given up for Lent, what they're giving up during this season. Make sure you give up something that will cause you to draw closer to God. What you give up will strengthen you will strengthen you to the point that you will be able to say more than no to the devil, that what you give up will cause you to draw closer and closer to the cross. Let us not do anything during this Lenten season for personal gain and, 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 and cause us not to rely on the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us. Let us not be tempted by the wiles of the enemy. He got all kind of tricks. He's, he's very creative. And as I said, he ain't going to give up easily. Let, let us realize that we got to make sure we build up our faith and our strength to be able to say more than no to the devil. Let us not be tempted by the devil to satisfy our physical hungers when God is calling us to hunger more and more for him. Let us not be tempted by the devil to use the power God has given us in the wrong way. Don't test the, don't test God. Don't, 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 don't play with God. Uh, let us not be tempted to forget who we are and whose we are. Jesus was mindful of who he was, even though he was going through these temptations, even though the devil was trying his best to turn him around. He knew who he was and that he didn't have to prove anything. He said, if you are the son of God, do this. It wasn't about if. He knew who he was. As you journey to the cross during these 40 days, going through the wilderness, many experiences and many temptations, be filled with the Spirit. Be led by the Holy Spirit and be equipped to stand against the enemy with, by using the word of God and resisting the devil. Know that God gives us an escape. He gives us power to resist 
the devil. Let us follow the example of Jesus and allow the Holy Spirit to have his way during this season. Let us pray as Jesus did and meditate on loving the Lord our God with all of our heart, our mind, and our soul. Let us stay focused on uh, worshiping God and being true to him and not allow the devil to manipulate the word of God because that's what Satan did when he couldn't get him one way, he tried another. But Satan knows more scripture than we know. So he was trying to use the scripture against you, but remember who you are and how the word is used and use it for the power and for the edification of God and blessing his name, not for your own personal gain. Jesus operated in his humanity, not his divinity, when he was tempted by the devil. He knew what the plan was for his life. The Father's plan for Jesus was for him to suffer first, then enter his glory. And Satan was trying to offer him a way out of the suffering that God had already purposed for his life. Satan was trying to give him an out, an easy out. Satan is trying to give us an out, an easy out. Satan tries to tempt us to give us a, 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 a happier life, a more more enjoyable life and, and cause us to think that if we worship him, that he'll do this and he'll do, he'll do that. No, everything he does is to our destruction. He ain't trying to help you. He's not trying to help you stay safe. He's not trying to help you glorify God. He's trying to get you to worship him. Jesus knew about being tempted. He knew about being attacked and tempted for who he was. When the devil had finished every test with Jesus, was tempted, the Bible says he departed from him until an opportune time. Satan seized an opportune time when Jesus faced crucifixion. He waited to an opportune time. You know that when they crucified Jesus, he was vulnerable. He was in a weakened state. He was in fully in his humanity. And then Satan sh shows up. Then the devil shows up just at that moment where Jesus is at a point where he's about to endure the cross. Satan worked even through the soldiers and the people who divided his garments and cast lots. And the people who were looking on when Jesus was being crucified, even the rulers sneered at him and, and said, save others. If you, if you, if you can't uh, 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 save yourself, you supposed to be the Christ, save us. The chosen one of God, tempting him, mocking him, ridiculing him, even as he was on the cross, he knows about being tempted. The soldiers also mocked him and tempted him, saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Oh, I'm so glad that Jesus didn't get caught up in that. I'm so glad that Jesus said more than no. I'm so glad that Jesus stayed on that cross. I'm so glad that Jesus didn't get confused and caught up in what the enemy was offering him. And one of the criminals who hang there blasphemed him and said, if you are the cross, save yourself and save us. But Jesus would not come down from the cross because he was born to die on the cross for us. And there was nothing that the enemy could offer him that would cause him to change the plan of God. There was nothing the enemy would offer him that would cause him to say, oh yeah, I, I don't I, I haven't sinned. Uh, well, I don't even know why I'm dying for all these sinners. No, Jesus stayed on the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When they mocked him, when they tempted him, when they scorned him, when they called him all kind of names, out of his name, called him everything but a child of God. You know how they do. Jesus stayed focused. And he said, more then no, he had already decided to obey the will of God. His mind was made up. He would not strike a deal with the devil. He said, no deal, devil. I'm not going down that road. I'm going all the way. I was born for this. I am prepared for this. I'm equipped for this. I will endure the cross. I will not compromise with you. He did not give in to the devil. He surrendered to the will of God and gave his life for us. He died that we might live. I'm so glad that Jesus told the devil no. I'm so glad that he told him more than no. I'm so glad that he didn't fall for the okie doke. I'm so glad that he wasn't enticed by what the enemy was offering him in that moment, in that weakened state. I'm so glad that he said this, he will not uh, uh, allow this cup to pass. He will endure the cross on our 
behalf. The God sent his son to die for the whole world. And Jesus said, I'm going all the way. I'm so glad that he said yes to the will of God and yes to his way. I'm so glad he said no to the enemy. I will not come down. I will not come down. It wasn't the nail that held him to the cross. He could have come down, but guess what? The world will still be lost. The ransom was so high. Only he could pay the cost. It wasn't the nails that held him to the cross. He told the devil, no and no, done and done. I'm going all the way for those my father is saving, even through me. Praise the Lord. Jesus didn't make a deal with the devil. He didn't make a deal with the devil. He didn't say yes because it was easy to go that route. He didn't say yes to the enemy. He said no. He said more than no. He stood on the word of God and resisted the temptations of the enemy. Even when he was crucified, they were still trying to tempt him. The enemy was still at work. So you know that as Jesus was on the cross and, and the devil was still trying to tempt Jesus, you can believe that the devil's not going to let up on us. He's going to continue to reveal things to us, to entice us and cause us to say yes to him. But you got to say no. You got to say more than no to the devil. Stand on the word of God and know that the word of God will not return unto your boy. It will accomplish what God purpose. And no weapon, whatever the enemy does, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. It doesn't mean that you won't go through a wilderness experience. It don't mean that you won't get sick. It doesn't mean that you won't have hard times. But no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. God will fulfill the purpose and plan he has for your life, just like he did in Jesus. Hallelujah. We got the victory because Jesus said no. Hallelujah. We got the victory because Jesus said more than no. We got the victory because Jesus stood on the word of God and said, I shall not be moved. We got the victory because Jesus endured the cross on our behalf. We got the victory because the blood still works. We got the victory because God continues to do a great work. Even in Jesus through his crucifixion, God was working on our behalf. We give God glory that we can stand and confront the enemy and say no for it. It is written, hallelujah, it's in the word of God, that greater is in me than he that's in the whole world. We can stand before the devil and say, no, it is written, hallelujah, I got the victory. I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. We can stand on the word and let the enemy know that if God be for me, it doesn't matter if the whole world is against me. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if you crucify me. I will get the victory. So you got to say more than no. Stand on the word of God. He proved his love. There is no greater love than a man would lay down his life for his friends. Are you glad Jesus said no? Are you glad that the devil couldn't tempt our Lord and our Savior? Jesus had work to do on our behalf and he would not be turned around. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I know it was enticing. I know our Savior was hungry, but he said, I can't live by bread alone. I know it was tempting. All that power the devil promised, but he knew he was going to have some power that was greater than any power the devil could offer him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. During this Lenten season, be able to say more than no. I know, I know you're going to turn your plate down, but be able to say more than no. I know you're going to stop doing some things, but be able to say more than no. Be able to say no to the devil, but yes to the Lord. Be able to say no to the temptations and the things that the enemy enticed you with, but say yes to the will and the way of God. Be able to say no to those things that look good and you think you might enjoy having in your life, but say no to that, but yes to the Lord. Anybody have a yes today for the Lord? Anybody have a yes? A yes. 
for the Lord and realizing that whatever the enemy is putting before you, whatever he's offering, it, it, you know how some things are too good to be true? That's why the devil offers you stuff. It's, it's too good to be true. It ain't true. He's the father of lies, remember. So no matter what it looks like, it, it's not your truth. It's not your reality. It's not what God wants for you. So we extend the invitation to say yes to the Lord. To say yes to the Lord that I will trust and obey you. That I will follow you. I will allow the spirit of God, your Holy Spirit to fill me. And I will allow your Holy Spirit to lead me. Is there a yes to the Lord? If you are worshiping via Zoom or Facebook Live, will you say yes to the Lord today? Will you say yes that you will accept him into your heart because Jesus died for you? He loved you so much that he was willing to resist all of the temptations of the enemy and stay on the cross. He's proven his love. Will you say yes to him today? The enemy will offer you all kind of things and temporary pleasures in this life. The world has a whole bunch of stuff that, that flash before us, but it'll, it'll pass away and you'll find yourself living in eternity with the enemy. But God has given us the promise of eternal life. If you say yes to him, Hallelujah. And if by chance you've already said yes, but your yes been a little weak, it's been a little shady, it's been a little shaky, and you want to recommit your life to the Lord, you can say yes again today. If that's you, this invitation is for you. Hallelujah. If you stand in need of prayer and you're just having a hard time saying more than no, you need God's strength. You're going through some things and you're being challenged on every hand and you just need prayer. This invitation is for you. And we're mindful that everybody that's worshiping doesn't have a church home, doesn't have a place to worship and call home in fellowship with the saints of God. It's going to tell them to forsake not the assembly, but you also need leadership. You also need a pastor. And if God is speaking to you, this invitation is for you for membership. You already know Jesus. So God is speaking. If that's you, please come. You can share virtually your intention. Or if you're here at Park and Praise, you can come down for prayer. Don't give up. Don't give in. God says, I'll give you an escape. I will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can endure. I will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can say no to. If you say no, it's because you want, if you say yes, it's because you want to say yes, but you can say no. Because God said he won't put more on us than we can bear. I don't care how appealing the enemy makes it look. God said, I'll give you the strength to endure and to say no. Is there one? Is there anyone for prayer? You may come. Amen. Amen. You can just stay right there. Amen. Now you can come a little closer. Amen. Is there anybody else like to come for prayer at this time? Then come on. I know, I know you just told him no, but he ain't through with you. He gonna come with something else. He got all kind of tricks up his sleeve. You ain't home free because he got he's off your back now. He coming for you, but you got to be able to say more than no. Hallelujah. We give God praise. We give God glory. Bless the Lord. Bless God. Bless God. God bless you. For those that are worshiping me on uh, Facebook, if you have uh, prayer requests, you can put them in the chat. You can express that. 
And we can't minister to you now. We will call you back. Amen. God bless you. Anybody have any special requests at this time? Yes, Ms. Lee. Yes. Will your spirit still say yes? Yes, 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 amen. God says, forgive us what we need to resist. The things that even our body craves. That we will not depend on it. It's up here. And God will give us what we need. If I don't need this, I can say no and stand on the word of God. The enemy wants us to keep doing things that are not good for us. The enemy wants us to think that we can't live without it, but the truth is you can. And you will live without it. A healthier Maybe life, a better life, a fuller life without the things that are harmful to us. Anybody yeah. else? Mm -hmm. If I told Amen. Anybody say yes to the Lord? Yes, yes. We say more than no to the devil, but yes to the yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, we come before you right now, oh God. We say yes. We come, oh God, knowing that you are God and there's none like you, Lord. We come, oh God, ask you to forgive us of our sins for all of sin to come short of your glory. We come, oh God, realizing that the devil comes to kill, kill, and destroy and will attack a good, uh, uh, a loving God, the servant of God. The devil will not take his hands off of us. He's always trying to do something. But you said, oh God, that we can resist the devil. You said, oh God, that you would not allow him to tip us beyond what we can handle. You said, oh God, that you would give us strength and power to endure. Hallelujah. You said it, oh God. And you gave us the example of your son, Jesus, who was tipping, oh God. You gave us the example of your son, oh God. That was able to endure, hallelujah, all that the devil put before him. You gave us the example, oh God, how to stand on your promises, how to stand on your word, how to believe your Lord, oh God. You, you showed us and demonstrated in your word through your son, oh God, that we don't have to be enticed by what the enemy has to offer. We don't have to worry about being in lack, for you are our provider. You will provide everything that we need. The devil can't offer us anything that's good for us, but all good and perfect gifts come from you, oh God. And we thank you, Lord. We come say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, God. And Lord, we realize in the midst of our thank yous, we have some prayer requests. In the midst of our thank yous, oh God, in the midst of our confirmation that you are God and there's none like you, that we have some need. In the midst of our celebration and worship and praise, we still got some prayer requests. In the midst of our thank you, Jesus, and bless your name, Lord, we're still going through some things. In the midst of our praise be to the Lord, we still have some needs, God. In the midst of us serving you and trying to live for you, oh God, we still have sickness in our body. In the midst of us leaving you, Lord, oh God, we're still having a hard time making it in peace. In the midst of all that's going on, oh God, we say yes to your will and yes to your way. We pray, God, right now for family. We pray for healing, oh God. We pray for reconciliation, oh God. We pray for uh, 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 not realizing, oh Lord, that we need you to help us to forgive and to be forgiven. We say right now, Lord, we lift up the worship in the name of Jesus for every need, for every request, oh God. It's in your hands. It's in your hands, oh God. You know, I can't tell you, Lord God, anything about it. You already know. And we ask right now in the name of Jesus that they will line up with your will and your way. Saints, take your hands off of them right now, oh God. Saints, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You have no authority. You have no power. You have no right, oh God. We speak 
word. Oh, hallelujah. We give that praise. I made up in my mind. I made up in my mind. I made up in my mind and I say, yes. Have you made up in your mind and tell the Lord, yes? My heart says, yes. 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 Yes, 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 just tell him yes, tell him yes, tell him yes, tell him yes, do what you want to do, Lord, yes, Lord, what you want me to say, I'm going to ask you to, if you don't mind, to get out of your class for a minute, just reach out your arms up and tell him Lord, yes. If you don't mind, put on your jacket. Just stand up and just say yes. Just say yes. During this Lincoln season, Lord, I just say yes. I say yes to you, Lord. I say yes. I say yes. I say yes to you, Lord. I say yes to you, Lord. I'm going to draw closer to you, Lord, during this party day. During this Lincoln season, my, my heart says yes. Whatever the devil offers me, I'll tell him no, but I say yes to you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Anything that's not like you, I say no, and I say yes to your will and yes to your way. My heart says yes. Tell him yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Lord, I say yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Lord. I do your will. I must be closer and closer to you, oh God, during this time. My soul says yes. 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 When I weaken my body, my soul still says yes, oh God. When I pick it by the enemy, my soul still says yes. Hallelujah. When I'm enticed by what the enemy has to offer, my soul says yes to you, Lord. Hallelujah. There is more, there. more that you desire of us, oh God. You want more of us. You want more of us. He's calling you higher. He's calling us higher in him. He's calling us there closer. More, He's calling us closer. He's calling us higher in him. We have not arrived. We say yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be yes, afraid. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He said, I'm calling you out of your dry place. He's calling us out of dry I'm places. Out of He's calling us out of the wilderness. Oh, He's calling us out of those dark places as well. Come on up a little He's higher. Yes, Come on up a little higher. Lord. Yes, Lord. A little higher. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We trust in you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We say yes to your will. Yes to your way, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. My soul says yes. Hallelujah. There is more than God requires of us. Thank you, 
Lord. Just continue to tell the Lord, yes. I don't care what stuff and blocks the enemy puts in your way. Keep telling the Lord, yes. He said, seek my face. Seek his face. He says, seek my face. Seek his face. He says, stay in your word. Stay on your knees. And say, yes. Yes, Lord. We hear your voice, oh God. Speak to us, Lord. We hear your voice, oh Lord. Speak to us, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm calling you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. We give God praise. What a beautiful sight. But you worship and surrender to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare for Holy Communion. Let us prepare. If you don't have communion elements, please make us aware so we can make sure that you receive them. Truly, God is worthy. Oh, he's worthy of praise. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we say yes. Thank you, Lord. My heart says yes. My soul says yes. Thank you. Let us join together for the prayer of humble access. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. I'm trying to transition, amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's nothing like saying yes to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer of humble access together. It is found in your worship guide. It is for all of us to pray together. We do not presume to come to this by table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. 
but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Thank you, Lord. Grant us therefore gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The prayer of consecration. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy is give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and then institute and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech thee and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed to bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. And now I'll take the cup. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. The bread symbolizes the broken body of our Lord and Savior, broken for you and for me. Amen. Give God praise for the bread. Amen. I'm unable to open the bread. The bread is symbolic of Jesus' body. Symbolic of his body. He said to disciples, This is my body, which is given for you. And he gave thanks. And he ate it. And then he took the cup and he said to his disciples, This is the cup of the New Testament, which was shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. And he told them to take it and drink all of it. So I take this cup, I give thanks, and I remember the precious blood of Jesus, and I drink it. Now let us recite the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive
forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now I would ask that you would take the bread. I'm going to give you a moment because you might have a challenge like I had a challenge to get to that bread. That bread is symbolic of the body of Jesus that was given for you and for me. My brothers and sisters, take the bread and eat it together. Now, if you would take the cup, the cup represents the shed blood of Jesus. Shed for you and shed for me. Jesus told his disciples to take the cup. He gave thanks and he says, this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many. Now you take the cup and drink it together. Drink ye all of this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us give God praise for the opportunity to commune once again in his table. Because Jesus said yes. Because he said yes, we are able to commune together. Because he said yes. We are able to come to the table knowing we're not worthy to even gather up the crumbs under his table, but because of his mercy, because he said yes, we're able to come. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to go on and share the benediction and then we'll have a song of fellowship. Amen. After the benediction. And we want to make sure we're able to see all who's at church today. Amen. Amen. Know that we will have church check-in this evening at 6 o'clock. It's been a while. We'll have it this evening. Oh, we give God praise for the privilege of worship. We thank the Lord for the opportunity to come and see each other today, fellowship and worship our God together. What a blessing God has given us once again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Let the people of God who say yes to the Lord say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. To God be the glory for all that he has done and continues to do. Amen. For those that worship with us virtually, God bless you and keep you. Have a blessed week. Continue to say yes to the Lord. The Lord has given us strength and power to be able to tell the enemy no, to resist him and stand on his word. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Amen. Amen. Amen.